Hello lovely students, welcome back to my YouTube channel Kalib's English School. In today's video, I'm going to talk about car theory test chapter 13, incidents, accidents and emergencies. I'm going to cover the whole chapter from this DVSA official guide. In this chapter, we're going to talk about all the important questions that if you come across any situation where you face an incident or accident or an emergency, how are you going to react to that? Your understanding can save someone's life. So it's better we understand all the questions in detail. Before I start, I would like you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon down below for all the updates. So let's straight jump into that. Question one, you are on a motorway. When can you use hazard warning lights? When a vehicle is following too closely? When you slow down quickly because of a danger ahead, when you are being towed by another vehicle, when you are riding on the hard shoulder. The correct option is B, when you slow down quickly because of danger ahead. Question 2. What should you do if you have to stop while you are going through a congested tunnel? Congested tunnel means very busy, too much traffic in there. A. Pull up very close to the vehicle in front to save space. B. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. C. Make a U-turn and find another route. D. Ignore any message signs as they are never up to date. The correct option is B. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Question 3. On a motorway, when should the hard shoulder be used? mean when can you use the hard shoulder when answering a mobile phone when an emergency arises when taking a short rest when checking a road map correct option is b when an emergency arises then you can stop on the hard shoulder question four what should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway stop close to the box until police arrive Pull over the hard shoulder, then remove the box. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Catch up with the lorry and try to get the driver's attention. The correct option is C. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Question 5. You are the first to arrive at the scene of a crash. What should you do? Drag all casualties away from the vehicles. Call the emergency services promptly, leave as soon as another motorist arrives, flag down other motorists to help you. The correct option is B, call the emergency services promptly. Means without wasting any time, you should call 999. Question 6. At an incident, it's important to look after any casualties. What should you do with them when the area is safe? Move them away from the vehicles, give them something to eat, keep them where they are, ask them how it happened. The correct option is C, keep them where they are. Question 7. You arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. No other vehicle is involved. The rider is unconscious and lying in the middle of the road. What's the first thing you should do at the scene? Move the rider out of the road. Warn other traffic, clear the road of debris, give the rider reassurance. The correct option is B, warn other traffic. So how are you going to do that? You're going to be doing that by using your hazard warning lights. Question 8. What could you do to help injured people at an incident? So how can you help them? Keep them on the move by walking them around, give them a warm drink, Keep them warm and comfortable. Give them something to eat. The best practice is C. Keep them warm and comfortable. Question 9. You arrive at an incident. There is no danger from fire or further collision. Emergency service is being called. What's the first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? So everything has been done. What should you do when you attend an unconscious motorcyclist? Check whether they are breathing normally. Check whether they are bleeding. 
check whether they have any broken bones, check whether they have any bruising. The correct option is B, check whether they are breathing normally. Question 10. You are first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You have switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all the engines are stopped. What else should you do? Try and get people who are injured to drink something. Make sure that an ambulance has been called. Stop other cars and ask the drivers for help. Move the people who are injured clear from their vehicles. The correct option is make sure that an ambulance has been called. Question 11. You arrive at the scene of a motorcycle crash. The rider is injured. When should their helmet be removed? Only when the motorcyclist asks, always unless they are in shock, only when it's essential, always straight away. The correct option is C, only when it's essential. Question 12. After collision, someone is unconscious in their vehicle. When should you call the emergency services? Only as a last resort, as soon as possible, after you have woken them up, after checking for broken bones. The correct option is B, as soon as possible, just call the emergency services. Question 13. Which document may the police ask you to produce after you've been involved in a collision? Your vehicle registration document? your driving license, your theory test certificate, your vehicle service record. The correct option is B, your driving license. Question 14. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? When an ambulance is on its way, when bystanders tell you to move them, when there is risk of further danger, when bystanders offer to help you. The correct option is when there is a risk of further danger. Question 15. You are at the scene of an incident. How could you help someone who is suffering from a shock? Give them a warm drink, offer them some food, reassure them confidently, offer them a cigarette. The correct option is C. Reassure them confidently. Question 16. At an incident, how could you help a casualty who has stopped breathing? Keep their head tilted forwards as far as possible. Follow the DRABC code. Raise their legs to help with circulation or try to give them something to eat. The correct option is follow the DRABC code. Now, what does DRABC stand for? D for danger, R for response, A for airways, B for breathing, and C for compression. So, you need to follow this code. That is the best practice. Question 17. You arrive at the scene of a crash where someone is bleeding heavily from a wound in their arm. Nothing is embedded in the wound. What could you do to help? Walk them around and keep them talking. Dab the wound. Get them a drink. Apply firm pressure over the wound. The correct option is D. Apply firm pressure over the wound. And why do we do that? We do that to stop bleeding. Question 18. At an incident, someone is suffering from swear burns. How could you help them? Remove Anything sticking to the burns, douse the burns with clean, cool water, apply lotions to the injury, burst any blisters. The correct option is douse the burn with clean, cool water. Question 19. What's the first thing you must do if you have a collision while you are driving a car? A. Stop only if someone waves at you. Call the emergency services. Stop at the scene of the incident. Call your insurance company. The correct option is C. Stop at the scene of the incident.
Question 20. An adult casualty isn't breathing. To maintain circulation, CPR should be given. What is the correct depth to press down on their chest? The correct depth, 1 to 2 centimeters, 5 to 6 centimeters, 10 to 15 centimeters, or 15 to 20 centimeters. Guys, the correct option is 5 to 6 centimeters. Question 21. A casualty isn't breathing normally and needs CPR. At what rate should you press down and release on the center of their chest? 10 times per minute, 120 times per minute, 60 times per minute, 240 times per minute. The correct option is 120 times per minute. Question 22. Following a collision, a person has been injured. What would be a warning sign for a shock? Flushed complexion, warm dry skin, slow pulse, rapid shallow breathing. The correct option is D, rapid shallow breathing. Question 23. At an incident, how could you help a small child who isn't breathing? A. Put them in recovery position and slap their back. B. Talk to them confidently until an ambulance arrives. C. Find their parents and explain what's happening. D. Open their airway and begin CPR. The correct option is D. Open their airway and begin CPR. Question 24. You are going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion on an incident ahead? So how are you going to find out that there has been an accident ahead? Because it's a tunnel we cannot see clearly. On the open stretch of the road we can see like at a distance and we can identify that there has been an accident. We can control our car or we can slow down. But in a tunnel we cannot see. There may be a bend in a tunnel. So how are you going to find out? You're going to find out because of hazard warning lines. You're going to find out other drivers flashing their headlights at you, variable message signs, or areas with hatch marking. The correct option is C, variable message signs. Question 25. You see a car on the hard shoulder of a motorway with a help pennant displayed. What does this mean? The driver is first aid trained. The driver is a foreign visitor. The driver is likely to be a disabled person. The driver is a rescue patrol officer. The correct option is C. The driver is likely to be a disabled person, so they may need help. So you need to stop and help them as a responsible citizen. Question 26. What should you do before driving into a tunnel? So before we drive into a tunnel, we have to do something. And what is that? Close your sunroof, switch on your windscreen wipers, switch off your radio, take off your sunglasses. You need to take off your sunglasses because there is already dark inside the tunnel. You have sunglasses on, you cannot see clearly, so visibility will be reduced for you if you put on sunglasses. So make sure you take them off. Question 27. What should you do if your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel? Guys, just picture that in your mind on an open stretch of the road. If you break down, you can pull up on the hard shoulder and you can call your recovery services or anyone else. But just imagine you are inside a tunnel and it's very congested and you break down. Unfortunately, what should you do? You should stay in your vehicle and wait for the police. Stand in the lane behind your vehicle to warn others. Stand in front of your vehicle to warn oncoming drivers. Switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. The best practice is switch on the hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. Question 28. Which light should you use when you are driving in a tunnel? 
side lights, front spot lights, dipped headlights, rear fog lights. Correct option is C, dipped headlights. Question 29. What should you do as you approach a long road tunnel? Chain down to a lower gear. Make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. Put on your sunglasses to use the sun visor. Turn your headlights on to main B. Correct option is B. Make sure your radio is tuned to the frequency shown. Question 30. What should you carry for use in the event of a collision? Jump leads, road map, can of petrol or fire extinguisher. The correct option is you should have fire extinguisher with you. Question 31. You're driving on a motorway. When can you use hazard warning lights? When a vehicle is following too closely, when you slow down quickly because of danger ahead, when you are towing another vehicle, when you are driving on the hard shoulder. The correct option is B when you slow down quickly because of danger ahead. Question 32. You have broken down on two-way road. You have a warning triangle. At least how far from your vehicle should you place the warning triangle? 5 meters, 25 meters, 45 meters, 100 meters. The correct option is you should place the warning triangle at 45 meters. Question 33. What should you do if your vehicle has a puncture on a motorway? A. Drive slowly to the next service area to get assistance. B. Pull up on the hard shoulder or in an emergency refuge area. Change the wheel as quickly as possible. C. Pull up on the hard shoulder or in an emergency refuge area and call for assistance. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Stop in your lane. The correct option is B. Pull up on the hard shoulder or in an emergency refuge area and call for assistance. Question 34. You're driving on the motorway. What should you do if luggage falls from your vehicle? Walk back up to the motorway to pick it up. Pull up on the hard shoulder and wave traffic down. Stop at the next emergency telephone and report the incident. Stop on the motorway and switch on hazard warning lights while you pick it up. The correct option is stop at the next emergency telephone and report the incident. Question 35. What should you do if your vehicle catches fire? while you are driving through a tunnel. Guys, imagine you are in a tunnel and your car catches fire. That's more dangerous than on an open stretch of the road because on an open stretch of the road, we can see and we can run away from it. But in a tunnel, when it's too congested and your car catches fire, people are at risk. So what you need to do, leave it where it is with the engine running, Pull up, then walk to an emergency telephone, park it away from the carriageway, drive it out of the tunnel if it's safe to do so. The correct option is drive it out of the tunnel if it's safe to do so. Question 36. What should you do to reduce the risk of your vehicle catching fire? So how can we reduce the risk of a vehicle catching fire? Keep water level above maximum. Check out any strong smell of fuel. Avoid driving with a full tank of fuel. Use fuel additives. The correct option is B. Check out any strong smell of fuel. Question 37. What should you do if a tire bursts while you are driving? So while driving, your car's tires burst. What should you do? Or what's the best practice? Pull on the parking brake. Brake as quickly as possible. Pull up slowly at the side of the road. Continue on at a normal speed. The best practice is pull up slowly at the side of the road. Question 38. 
your vehicle has stalled in the middle of a level crossing. What should you do if the warning bell starts to ring while you are trying to restart the engine? Get everyone out of the car and clear of the crossing. Run down to track to warn the signal operator. Carry on trying to restart the engine. Push the vehicle clear of the crossing. The best practice is get everyone out of the car and clear of the crossing. So your option A, which is the most appropriate one, that is your correct option. Question 39. What information should you share if you are involved in a collision that causes damage to another vehicle? In simple words, you had an accident with someone. What should you do? What information are you going to exchange? Your occupation and reason for your injury, your name, address, and vehicle registration number, your national insurance number, your internet service provider. The correct option is B. You will share your name, address, and vehicle registration number. Question 40. You lose control of your car and damage a garden wall. What must you do if the property owner isn't available? Report the incident to your insurance company when you get home. Find someone in the area to tell them about it immediately. Report the incident to police within 24 hours. Go back to the house owner the next day. The correct option is you should report the incident to police within 24 hours. Option C, that's the correct one. So guys, this was Car Theory Test Chapter 13, Incidents, Accident and Emergencies. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Look after yourself and this channel. Thanks for watching.